Hi everyone, welcome back to lesson four. Today we're gonna to talk about sweet freezer treats and fruit storage, as well as bread and how to keep it last longer in your fridge and freezer. If you have any questions or concerns throughout this lecture, please feel free to bring them up in class and we can talk about them then. So we're gonna start with free, sweet freezer treats and fruit storage. So we're gonna talk about how to uh, store your fresh fruit and ripe fruit. Uh, how we can apply last week's concept of freezing techniques to our freezer treats. And we're going to identify the difference between spoiled and ugly fruit or, you know, ones that have a little extra character to them. We're going to apply today's concepts to like cookie doughs, uh, protein balls, and like popsicles. So first we have this infographic. It's great. It tells you what fruits do the best where. So essentially avocados, bananas, kiwis, mangoes, those do the best. Those ripen and they um, last longer on the counter versus the refrigerator. The fridge is ideal for apples and all. You have your berries, cherries, and grapes. Um, your pantry, you're gonna want to store. Uh, this isn't a fruit, but you want to store your onions and potatoes there. And again, you can put your all your fruits in the freezer as long as you store them um, in the methods we've been talking about. So, fruit actually won't ripen in the fridge. Uh, fruit that does ripen on the counter. So we see our avocados, mangoes, bananas, and kiwis. So if you've ever seen a banana that's been going brown on the counter, that's just because it's getting a little extra ripe on there, all right? You're gonna wanna store fruit um, as whole in the fridge in a fruit drawer usually, and this will help it last longer. If you do cut up your fruit, it's gonna spoil faster, but that's okay. Uh, you're just gonna wanna eat it within about uh, three to five days after cutting it. So you're gonna store it in your airtight container like we've been talking about, and that will help it last longer. And here's an example for um, a mango. So again, you keep it at room temperature on the counter. So stage one, stage two, and stage three, it's like very sweet and very ripe. You're, that's when you're gonna wanna put it in the refrigerator. So for berries, um, you're gonna wanna store it in the original packaging. This will help it last longer. You, in order to prep it, you're gonna wanna rinse your fruit in a colander in the sink. You can also apply this to vegetables as well. And the colander is uh, the top right with the uh, raspberries in it. You're going to dry it with a paper towel afterwards, and then you can enjoy your fruit. You're going to apply this to strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and grapes. But you can really apply the washing and drying to any kind of fruit or vegetable. Here's a handy dandy chart, and this is really helpful to show you what, lasts, what fruit lasts better where, and some key notes about it. So if you have overripe fruit, I'm sure someone at one point in time, you've seen a overripe banana on the counter, it's extra brown. Um, you can actually store this fruit. You don't have to throw it away and this will save you money in the long run. You can use, um, you can store this fruit in a plastic reusable freezer bag. You're gonna wanna squeeze all the air out like we've been doing. You're gonna label and date it. And some advice is to peel the bananas prior to freezing. It's really hard to get the peel off the banana once it's frozen. You're gonna have to let it defrost if you wanna use it for a recipe or um, in a smoothie. So it's really helpful to have it pre-peeled in order to use it quickly. You can also store your fruit uh, in ice cube trays. So you can blend it in a blender or even juice your fruit in a juicer. You can pour the liquid into an ice, cre ice cube tray. You can place the ice cube trays in your freezer. Make sure there's a lid on it so you, know, you don't get other food or stuff in your freezer on it. You're gonna put these frozen ice cubes after they're already frozen into a plastic resealable freezer bag and make sure you get all the air out again and you're gonna label and date it so that way you can use it. I use this with lemons. We have a lot of, we have a lemon tree in our backyard and oranges. So you can make really like easy lemon water, orange juice, or you can even put them in your smoothies as a, they're really helpful. So again, these are some uses for frozen fruit um, that's extra ripe or you just wanted to buy frozen fruit. You can use it in smoothies. You can use it when baking. You can use it in popsicles as on the right hand side. You can also put it in those ice cube trays. And it's also really good uh, yogurt, good for yogurt parfaits and oatmeal. And frozen fruit's really great for meal prep because it does last longer in your freezer. Just make sure you're using it within the appropriate amount of time. Some examples of sweet freezer treats that you can meal prep in advance would be cookie dough. So all you have to do is prep your cookies like you normally would. And before you put them in the oven, uh, you just Put them on a piece of parchment paper, on a baking sheet, or on a plate, depending on how many you made, and just stick them in your freezer. Wait till they get hard, and then once they're hard, you can just put them in a plastic bag, squeeze out the air, 
and label them and date them. And now you have cookies for whenever you want them. You don't have to eat all 12 at once. I mean, you can if you want to, but if you want to take out one while you're studying or doing a chore, you can just throw in the oven or the microwave or even the air fryer. And you have one cookie instead of having a dozen in front of you. Also protein balls are a really great snack. I make these at home all the time. All you have to do is mix up all your ingredients. Um, you can check out the video if you wanna watch me make them. You put them in the freezer, let them harden again, put them in a plastic bag, uh, freezer safe plastic bag, squeeze out all the air and reseal them. And now you have a sweet treat for whenever you want a little snack while studying. So this is really important, the difference between perfect versus spoiled fruit. And perfect just means the fruit has a little extra character to it, right? It's not the stereotypical, uh, for this case, orange that you think of when you go to the grocery store, the classic orange picture, right? This one has a little extra character to it. It has like a little nubbin thing on the bottom, right? But it tastes the same as a normal fruit. It just got, it just has extra character, right? And spoiled fruit, on the right is unpleasant. It has a very distinctive smell. It's gonna have the mold that we normally see. It's gonna be squishy. It's not, that one's not gonna be safe to eat at all. So spoiled is not safe to eat. The imperfect with a little extra character is safe to eat, all right? Here's another example of imperfect versus spoiled. The one on the left just has extra character to it. And the one on the right is spoiled. You can see the big brown spot to it. And you can also see where it's soft and mushy. That's really a key sign of spoilage. So now we've moved on to bread. Some, uh, we're gonna talk about again, bread storage techniques, how you can reheat bread uh, and how to make uh, double in freezing. And we're also gonna apply this to waffles, pancakes, muffins, and even bread loaves. So for the fridge, it's, be it's best to store bread in the fridge if you are an individual who consumes bread daily. This is also really good for people that live with multiple people that eat bread. So my family, we have a big family, everyone eats bread every day. So we keep it in the refrigerator. We store an airtight can Tupperware container or even a plastic resealable bag. And this helps it last longer in the refrigerator. Again, label and date it like we've been doing. And homemade fresh baked bread, uh, for those of you that make bread, lasts between five to eight days in the refrigerator. And store-bought bread lasts between seven to 12 days in the refrigerator. Uh, freezer is best to store your bread in the freezer if you are an individual and you eat bread less than three times a week and you've noticed that your bread's been getting moldy this is the best option you don't even have to put the whole loaf in the freezer you can put half the loaf in the freezer just take out what you're going to be eating for the week or eat, even leave the whole loaf in the freezer whatever works for you but this is for individuals who eat bread less than three times a week um, you're going to want to slice your bread if it's not pre-sliced. This makes it easier for you to take out a slice when you want it instead of having to defrost or struggle with cutting um, a rock solid frozen piece of or loaf of bread. If you are going to cut it, put a piece of paper, parchment paper between each slice. This helps it from sticking, sticking together. And we want to store it the same principle, store in a plastic resealable freezer bag, get all the air out, and you're going to label and date it so you know when to use it. This lasts up to six months in the freezer. If you want to reheat your bread, so say you have it in the fridge or the freezer, all you have to do is put it in the toaster and put it to your desired toasting settings, which is the one, two, three, four, whatever you prefer. Those are the amount of minutes apparently it takes to cook your bread. I did not know that. I learned that. So yeah, just toast it to your favorite setting. This can be done from frozen or from the fridge. Um, some other options to reheat bread products would be for the microwave, put it on a microwave safe dish, you're gonna to wanna to cover it with a damp paper towel. Make sure you wring out the water. You don't want it too wet. You're gonna heat um, the food or the bread product for about 30 second increments. And then once it's reached your desired temperature, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, then you're able to enjoy it. But this helps make sure the bread retains its moisture. If you don't have the damp cloth, you ever had like bread that kind of tastes like cardboard, it's just really, really dry tasting. The damp paper towel really helps to prevent that. If you're gonna put your, or reheat your bread in the air fryer or even the oven, you're gonna to wanna to turn your bread, uh, oven to 350. You're gonna cook it for about three, wait till it gets preheated um, to 350, cook it for about three to four minutes. And you're gonna cook this till your desired temperature and make sure you use an oven mitt so you don't burn yourself when it comes out. Making double and freezing. Uh, this is a really uh, fun thing to do with family and friends or even for yourself. 
I love to do this. I meal prep my favorite foods all the time and I freeze it for whenever I want it in the future. This helps you save time and money. Say you, it's finals week and you don't have any, you don't have any meal prep food for the week and you're too stressed to go grocery shopping or life is happening and you don't have time and you feel overwhelmed. Making double and freezing can be applied to any topic we've talked about um, over the course of these four days. And this is really helpful for just for, again, the, when, the, when life happens, right? So you have these pre-made foods in the freezer that you can just take out whenever you want. So for here, this example is waffles, pancakes, breads, muffins, and again, any food. So we have pancakes. You made them on this day and you want to use them by this day. It's again, finals week. You can just take out a pancake or two, have it with some protein and a fruit, and that, that, that can be a meal. So yeah, making double and freezing is a great way to meal prep. Waffles, same kind of thing. You're going to want to use your favorite waffle recipe. You Same principles apply. Let your food cool to room temperature. You can use a wire rack. This actually is really helpful because it prevents your waffles from getting soggy before you put them in the freezer. And you're going to store in the airtight container. And these will last up to three months in your freezer. Reheating, you're going to place your waffles in the toaster or in the new toast is your favorite setting. So the reheating process is the same thing that you would do for uh, making a slice of toast. From You're just gonna put it in the toaster. And here's an example of the wire rack. So again, this wire rack really helps make sure the uh, waffles don't get soggy after you cook them. So make sure they cool down on the wire rack prior to storing them in the freezer. And spoiled bread. Um, again, this is our examples of uh, what not to eat. You do not want to eat bread that has mold. The mold, again, is like this bluish, greenish, white color, as you can see here. This is not safe to eat. And it's really not safe to actually eat around the mold either. It's not, don't cut off the mold and eat the rest of the bread because you're not, it could be moldy. You just can't see it. So I would not eat um, around the bread. If it has mold on it, I would just either throw it away or put it in your compost bin. All right, that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you guys for listening. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know in class. See you then.